Hello, let's get back and happy Saturday, Saturday before Easter. Let's get back to chapter two. I had to cut it short yesterday because it was almost time for live, so that's why I didn't get to read all of chapter two. And when Trish asked me about putting my books in playlists, I forgot I do that when I title it and everything. I forgot. I had it already. <laughs> so that's good. So there are playlists for all the books I've read. If you're new, you can go back, just hit my playlist tab, and it'll have all the books I've read, and it'll have Wuthering Heights and this and what I've read thus far. Okay, still in chapter two of Wuthering Heights. The little witch put a mock malignity into her beautiful eyes, and Joseph, trembling with sincere horror, hurried out praying and ejaculating, they love that word, wicked, as he went. I thought her conduct must be prompted by a series of dreary fun, and now that we were alone, I endeavored to interest her, interest her in my distress. Mrs. Heathcliff, I said earnestly, you must excuse me for troubling you, I presume, because with that face, I'm sure, excuse me, I'm sure you cannot help being good-hearted. Do point out some landmarks by which I may know my way home. I have no more idea how to get there than you would have how to get to London. Take the road you came, she answered, ensconcing herself in a chair with a candle and the long book open before her. It is brief advice, but as sound as I can give. Then if you hear of me being discovered dead in a bog or a pit full of snow, your conscience won't whisper that it's par par partly your fault. How so? I cannot escort you. They wouldn't let me go to the end of the garden wall. You? I should be sorry to ask you to cross the threshold for my convenience on such a night, I cried. I want you to tell me my way, not to show it, or else to persuade Mr. Heathcliff to give me a guide. Who? There is himself, Ern Earnshaw, Zilla, Joseph, and I. Which would you have? Are there no boys at the farm? Nope, those are all. Then it follows that I am compelled to stay. That you may settle with your host. I have nothing to do with it. I hope it will be a lesson to you to make no more rash journeys on these hills, cried Heathcliff's stern voice from the kitchen entrance. As to staying here, I don't keep accommodations for visitors. You must share a bed with Hareton or Joseph if you do. I can sleep on a chair in this room, I replied. No, no, a stranger is a stranger. Be he rich or poor, it will not suit me to permit any one the range of the place while I'm off guard, said the unmannerly wretch. With this insult, my patience was at an end. I uttered an expression of disgust and pushed past into the yard, running against Earnshaw in my haste. It was so dark I could not see the means of an exit, and as I wandered round, I heard another specimen of their civil behavior amongst each other. At first the young man appeared, about to befriend me. I'll go with him as far as the park, he said. You'll go with him to hell, exclaimed his master, or whatever relation he bore. And who is to look after the horses, eh? A man's life is of more consequence than one evening's neglect of the horses. Somebody must go, murmured Mrs. Heathcliff more kindly than I expected. Not at your command, retorted Hareton. If you set store on him, you'd better be quiet. Then I hope his ghost will haunt you, and I hope Mr. Heathcliff will never get another tenant till the Grange is a ruin, she answered sharply. Harkin, harkin, shoes cursing on him, muttered Joseph, towards whom I had been steering. He sat with an earshot, milking the cows by the light of a lantern, which I seized unceremoniously and calling out, I would send it back on the morrow, rushed to the nearest postern. Maester, maester, he's stalling the lantern, shouted the ancient, pursuing my retreat. Hey, Nasher, hey, dog, hey, wolf, hollered him. 
Hold him, hold him. On opening the little door, two hairy monsters flew at my throat, bearing me down and extinguishing the light, while a mingled guffaw from Heathcliff and Hareton put on the copestone on my rage and humiliation put the copestone on my... Okay. Fortunately, the beasts seemed more bent on stretching their paws and yawning and flourishing their tails and devouring me alive, but they would suffer no resurrection. I was forced to lie till their malignant masters pleased to deliver me. Then, hatless and trembling with wrath, I ordered the miscreants to let me out on their peril to keep me one minute longer with severe, with several incoherent threats of retaliation that in their indifferent depth of viril virulency smacked of King Lear, the vehemence of my agitation brought on a copious bleeding at the nose, and still Heathcliff laughed, and, I, and still I scolded. I don't know what would have concluded the scene had there not been one person at hand rather more rational than myself and more benevolent than any entertainer. This was Zilla, the stout housewife, who at length issued forth to inquire into the nature of the uproar. She thought that some of them had been laying violent hands on me, and not daring to attack her master, she turned her vocal artillery against the younger scoundrel. Well, Mr. Earnshaw, she cried, I wonder what you'll have a gate next. Are we going to murder folk on our very do door stones? I see this house will never do for me. Look at the poor lad. He's fair choking. You mustn't go on so. Come in, and I'll cure that. There now, hold you still. With these words, she suddenly splashed a pint of icy water down my neck and pulled me into the kitchen. Mr. Heathcliff followed his accidental merriment, expiring quickly in his habitual moroseness. I was sick exceedingly and dizzy and faint, and thus compelled perforce to accept lodgings under his roof. He told Zilla to give me a glass of brandy and then passed on to the inner room while she condoled me with she condoled with me on my sorry predicament, and having obeyed his orders where I whereby I was somewhat revived, ushered me to bed. And that was the end of chapter two. So we didn't have much more to go. But like I said, I had to stop because it was time for my live yesterday. And that's all I'm going to read today. I am going to uh, read next Anne of Green Gables. will be on chapter three. So I'll just be a chapter behind on this one. Unless I may come back today at some point or tonight and read this just so we'll be at the same spot in both books. I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> Love to you all. It's a very sunny day here in Central North Carolina. But it's a cool one. It's okay. As long as the sun shines, that's good with me. Anyway, have a happy day. Hope to see you at 3 today. Remember, I come on two hours earlier on Saturday and Sunday. So, live at 3. T at 3 with Granny D. Today and tomorrow. Love you. See you later. Be sweet. Don't be ugly. Bye-bye.